Commercial satellite services and the signal data they provide are critical for military applications, including navigation, communication, and observation. Space-based RF data and analytics help provide military leaders with the information they need to make decisions. But adversaries can use commercial satellites too, as well as attack satellites used by the US. That means that the US must have a strategy for both offensive and defensive capabilities. Our recent Defense News webcast explored the many aspects of commercial satellite technologies and how they are helping to enhance national and global security. Here is some of that discussion. Hello, I'm Courtney Albin, reporter for C4ISRnet. Thanks for sticking around for our next conversation, which will dive into the role of commercial satellites in enhancing national and global security. We have with us today Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Kimmick, Division Chief for the Cross Mission Data Battle Management Command Control and Communications, or BMC3, for the United States Space Force. With his over 15 years of intelligence analysis and acquisition program management expertise, Colonel Kimmick has been responsible for delivering resilient and affordable space capabilities for our country. We're excited for this discussion, so let's jump right in. Hi, Lieutenant Colonel Kimmick, thanks for joining us today. Hi, good morning. In the last several years, we've seen kind of a significant increase in um, the number of satellites, many of them commercial, um, and the amount of debris on orbit, and, and that's projected to, to grow into the foreseeable future. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about kind of how that increased congestion and activity in space um, has impacted the work that your office does and, and, um, and, and yeah, how that's, how that's changed in, in recent years because of that? Yes, uh, you know, thinking back to a, a retirement yesterday that I attended uh, with uh, one of my aerospace colleagues, 10 years ago, we started the, uh, the hosted payload office uh, in trying to partner with commercial industry, uh, building hosted payload interface units and trying to find ways where uh, the military could partner with commercial spacecraft and uh, also looking at hosting government payloads uh, on, uh, on commercial spacecraft. And we, we did that actually about 10 years ago as sort of a pathfinder for proliferated LEO. So I think that was really the catalyst for, for where we are today and what we're seeing with the Space Development Agency. But take that forward about 10 years, and yes, we're seeing uh, SpaceX constellations numbering in the thousands, uh, SDA and others looking at uh, space-based transport. And so certainly from our perspective, from, a, from an SDA perspective, how do we close gaps? How do we keep track of the, the ever-increasing number of of our own spacecraft as well as um, as foreign spacecraft and enemy spacecraft, uh, we have to rely on on commercial. So we've certainly seen, uh, probably over the last five or six years, significant investment on the the side of SDA from commercial perspective. So uh, passive RF sensors, uh, electro optical sensors, again ground based, uh, as well as um, uh, other uh, phenomenologies that are then selling that information to the government for the purposes of making sure we have a complete picture uh, so we can keep track of the, again, ever-increasing number of, of spacecraft. Uh, and then we're also seeing uh, budding investment right now. There's a few organizations and a few companies that are looking at space-based uh, commercial SDA. Uh, and so I, I think we're, we're seeing significant investment right now in those capabilities uh, so that we we are not solely reliant on uh, the systems that we build from a government perspective, but can also partner with commercial to maintain uh, situational awareness. One of the challenges we see is again going back to the the standardization and, and format capabilities that uh, that our legacy C2 systems expect the data to arrive in. Uh, we found as we went through a uh, a test case with five uh, government-owned sensors, but sort of non-traditional sensors, AFRL uh, capabilities, electro-optical telescopes. Um, it's, it's very manually intensive on our space defense squadrons to perform sensor calibration. So as we bring on, every sensor we bring on gets a unique identification number, and it falls on the space defense squadrons to perform sensor calibration and understand the quality of that data we're trying to get to a point where we can automate that on their behalf. Uh, so the, the unfortunate aspect of bringing in non-traditional sensors that are government owned is that it increases the burden on the operators to actually ingest that information. So one of the challenges is how do we automate that? How do we understand the quality of the information? Um, is, it, um, is it accurate? Is it precise? And we compare that to previous information we received from those sensors and that decreases the workload on behalf of our operators. 
Uh, so again, I, I think we're pushing the boundaries here and we're understanding and, and better capturing the challenges of, of bringing in additional sensors. And so automation is going to be a, a critical enabler as we go forward.